volume pedal. Take the scratchy volume pot down. Very good. Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello and welcome. We've been asked for this loads and it's kind of, it's an interesting one. We've been asked to do a show on transistor amplifiers. Which is a bit like saying, can you do a show on valve amplifiers? Yeah. Because it's a, so we're going to try and get some questions together and begin a journey, mm. would you say? Definitely. Yeah. So this will be the start of the journey. Yeah. Da you know, um, let's, let's lay it all on the line from the start. Dan and I don't and haven't used transistor amps for a long time. A long time. Uh, through choice. Um, because we've just got used to the sound of really nice valve amps and that's, uh, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I've owned transistor amps in the past. Yes, as have I. Yep, had PV Bandit, which I liked very much. PV Bandit, I, my first amp. Had a Sessionette, which I really, really, really liked. Actually, there's there's a transistor amp. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, however, in the ensuing years, things like Fender Twin Reverbs and Vox AC30s and all of this stuff comes along and, well, I didn't look back. No, certainly, and, and so did I. The the interesting thing about transistor amplifiers, um, certainly for me, just they react to the note because there's no um, sagging or compression going on from within, you know, the power section. They're so quick, you know, yeah. they're so and they're so immediate and flat. Uh, as that's been my experience with with uh, transistor amplifiers. However, that can sometimes be a really fantastic yes, thing. Yes, it can be a great thing. And let's let's state right from the off, you know, this this video is not what Which sounds is, better exactly, a valve or a exactly. transistor amp because that has a one word answer for both of us and th better being a subjective mm. um, concept this is more about so the questions we get asked are um, you know how do common pedals react to mm -hmm. transistor amps compared mm -hmm. to uh, the valve amps that you normally use mm -hmm. and Hang on a minute, if you're just pushing a transistor pedal into the front of a valve amp, aren't you just negating the whole point of having a valve amp in the first place? Yep. And thirdly, the opposite of that, if you've got a lovely valve overdrive pedal and you're just pushing that into a transistor amp, doesn't that negate having a valve amp? So I think those are, those are the questions that we'll probably look at. Like it. Does that sound fair? Like it. Very good. Okay. So, amplifiers. Right. We've got... Um, so we wanted to keep this kind of real world. Yeah. We wanted to put in, um, we didn't want to use a like fancy our, amp. Exactly, our crazy expensive amplifiers compared to yeah. this solid state it, thing. It's, so it's not absolutely fair. not fair. So, um, however, we've got a Fender Bass Breaker 1830, which it's, ever since I first demoed one on the Anderton's channel, I've gone, that's a really, really good it's amp. It's killer. Yeah. Killer. So that's our reference. Um, valve amp, if you like, bearing in mind it's uh, an affordable, relatively affordable valve amp mm. right there in the middle of Fender's range. Yep. In fact, towards the bottom end of Fender's valve range. Um, Orange Crush Pro 60, CR60, and Roland Blues Cube Stage. So there are. A lot um, of guys really like that Blues Cube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rated at 60 watts, mm -hmm. as is the. Um, crush the mm -hmm. orange and the fender is 18 or 30 watts we've got it in the 18 watt mode cue a whole other load of questions <laughs> uh, but we felt that the kind of response in the amp was kind of similar in that power range uh, to the to the transistor amps yes so those are our amps mm -hmm. should we hear them Dan yes all right so uh, let's go with the orange <laughs> Blues Cube. And the Fender. Let's do that with the strap for a sec. I'm just going to go into the in-between section and, I don't know, play some chords. Yeah. 
Cool. So there we go. In the room, um, the 1830 is a 212 cab. It's putting out a bit more bottom end. It mm -hmm. sounds more authoritative. It sounds, uh, it has a different, more familiar feel under the fingers. That's the thing, isn't it? Would you it's agree? Just, absolutely. Just the, it just feels, the, the Blues Cube comes closer to it for me than the Orange, but so yeah, the, the Blues Cube. <laughs> You hear how it just goes, it's so, it's smack, it's so yeah. fast and... Whereas with the Fender... Suddenly the notes... Yeah. It's just, that's what valves do, they... What we'll do in a second after we've done the first pass of the pedals is set the amps up slightly differently so they're, they're overdriving a little bit. Yeah, in, in yeah, the front yeah end. That, that will... Negate. That will... At least ask, change ask it, the question. Exactly, it'll change yeah, yeah. that attack So. Thing. Let's, so as you can see on the board, we've got a, a selection of common overdrive types. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Tube Screamer, TS9 mm -hmm. Tube Screamer, absolutely standard. Um, version, I guess, 4 OCD, the latest OCD, is it 4? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Anyway, the, very la the latest OCD as of, um, what is it, September 2016, <laughs> if you're watching on Dave in the future. Um, Big Muff with Wicker, Electro Harmonics. And um, slightly less common, but here for valve purposes, is a Kingsley Harlot. So those are our drive pedals, mm -hmm. uh, plus, of course, the um, Strymon El Capistan for a bit of delay and loveliness. And reverb, as we found out yeah, in, our last, in our last video. So come on, then, mate, let's, uh, shall we have a listen? Okay, so let's start with the orange. Yep. Okay. Orange with the orange with the tube screamer. Yeah. Fender with the tube screamer. Sorry, the blues cube with the tube screamer. Fender with the Chief Screamer. Can I just try something? Will you switch switch through them one by one and we'll do the um, see if it does the blues bluesy thing yeah, with yeah. the strap? Yep. Okay, OCD. So uh, that was a tube screamer, obviously. OCD, for, the, for anyone who doesn't know, um, the tube screamer is kind of like a smooth clipped, fairly smooth sounding overdrive. The OCD is a hard clipped mm -hmm. overdrive still, but it veers into distortion a little bit, doesn't yes, it? Very touch absolutely. sensitive. And very remiss of us to never have one on the show before. Yeah, As you can see, we have acquired one. I'm, the first time I ever heard this was through my little AC10 twin. Really? At a guitar show. And I tell you what, it turned heads. It was awesome. And ever since then, I thought, yeah, I've got to get one. But I've, I just had so many overdrive pedals. Really? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I know, I know. But I had a friend um, uh, really made me a clone of one, which I've used, and it's awesome. But I had to get the Yeah, the get, the, deal. get the Because it's deal. just, you know, it's such a classic. Yeah. Um, the... Can I clear off a little thing about the OCD while we're here? Go on. This little switch here, a lot of guys, it's got HP and LP. A lot of guys have said, well, surely that's high power and low power. No, it means high pass and low pass. So oh. if you, yeah, so if you go, we go back to the, um, just through the, the bass breaker, if you want to play. Okay. 
Yeah, so just it's like a little yeah. capacitor letting a certain amount of no need through. No need to ask which position you prefer it in? No. No, <laughs> no need whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so uh, OCD then, let's hear it. Should we hear it with the telly first? Yeah, yeah. All right, so. <laughs> The uh, blues cube. And with that with the fender. Okay, I'm going to turn down the drive, push the amps a bit harder, just a tiny bit, turn down the drive and just see what this does with a slightly more, with a, with a humbucker. Okay. Just make sure my volumes are okay. That's fine. It's actually fine if we just push a little bit harder. Yeah. Sorry, I've just got my, I've got my eye on the audio meters there. Just to, just as a boost, to push yeah, yeah, the okay. amp a bit yeah, more. Some interesting notes there at the end, but the orange it's obviously voiced for that hard rock thing because yeah. it sounds great in the orange. Funnily enough, I thought it sounded good into both the tranny amps and then into the fender, it it lost a bit of presence or something. Yeah, because it, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. But if you did this, so at the moment we've got the tone knob down quite low on the fender because it's pretty bright sounding yeah. out. But if we then did this, just <laughs> Fair enough. A different, a different game. Um, okay. Okay. Now this is interesting. So now we're now we're onto fuzz territory. We're onto fuzz. So well, I'm gonna have to swap guitars again, Dan. All right. Fuzz into the orange. Fuzz into the blues cue. And fuzz into the fender.
Yeah, man. Yeah. So the, the interesting thing about the the fuzz with the valves, the fuzz reacts with the valve, um, and you can hear the valve sort of moving moving into loads of compression, and then as it dies back, then the again a bit more headroom, then you can hear the fuzz sort of coming in. Yeah. Um, so it works with that attack, but. With the transistor amplifiers, it's more of that's the sound, and that's, you know, yep. right up front. But it's not a bad sound. It sounds good. Not at all. Not at all. I thought they both... So, um, I don't know whether it's because I'm sat physically a little bit closer to it, but the mm. Blues Cube, there's it's got a mid-range that I quite like. Yeah. Um, it's just voiced differently to the Orange, because there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a rock element to the Orange. I can, you can, Which you'd expect. Exactly. It's, it's exactly what you'd expect. Yeah. Because uh, like with the OCD, I'm just hearing that through the eyes and going, okay, right, I can hear yeah. exactly what this amplifier is supposed to be doing, you know. Very cool. Yeah, okay. And then, so let's move on to the Kingsley Harlot. So this is a, a valve overdrive pedal, and this is to sort of begin to answer the question about if you're using a valve overdrive pedal, why on earth do you need a valve amp? Mm. Because surely you're creating all your sound in the pedal, and the amp is just there is a make louder device well we've probably answered this before but no because it uh, doesn't matter what pedal you're using it's the interaction of the two or the three yep. devices yep. that really that make the overall tone but anyway come on let's uh let's have a listen let's have a listen okay so because uh, you know this is new to me and dan as well yeah. so we're sat here kind of doing this for the first time we have deliberately not plugged these amps in before yep. we've made this video it's been a long time since i've plugged into a transistor amplifier yeah. so this is so this it's, is fascinating yeah, it's, it's new for us too mm -hmm. right. it's the orange now so the harlot mm -hmm. was a little bit more divided for me yeah yeah it was um it was a very different experience into the fender yeah the thing is because it's a valve overdrive pedal it doesn't mean anything it just means that the way they're creating the overdrives we're using a valve yeah, yeah, quite. you know yes it compresses differently and reacts differently that but at the end of the day it's voice to go into an amplifier it's not yeah. voice to go into a pa you know and I'm not saying that these things are PAs at all. These are still amplifiers, yeah, yeah, no, but, but it's reacting the same way any other pedal would, yeah, with with the, the valve amplifier. But the other two, are, they're, they're great. You know, they sound yeah. great. It's just there's perhaps because it's been so long since I've played one of these amplifiers and I instantly recognise and connect with the tone yeah. that the Fender's got. Yeah, you can't unlearn 25 years no. of what you've been hearing. It's, yeah, it just goes in. Yeah. One thing I quite like to try is the um, Origin uh, plumbed in. It is plumbed in. The 
I, maybe we try some clean sounds. Okay. Uh, using a compressor. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might have to change it. We're going to change the amps after this anyway. We're going to get a bit of gain going in the amps. But um, I just wonder about some clean sounds, or cleaner sounds anyway. I, Dan and I never really play clean, clean, clean sounds. But um, if we get some compression going and sort of, I don't know, maybe some... Um, <laughs> okay, let's try the orange. <laughs> okay, right, so the orange. of the first sound if you don't know. The way that the compressor, particularly when I played that D, you know, bend up to the D there. It was easing into the note really nicely, uh, and then the sustain on the end was just it was quite. That was really nice. Yeah, sound, no, it's just that's that's the one. That's a really good, really good yeah, sound. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, okay, so that was some clean sounds, right? So what have we learned so far? We like the feel of the, the valve amp. That might be the result of. Um, well, no, that absolutely is the result of years and years and years of being very familiar with something. But at the same time, that, that kind of goes backwards and forwards and it influences how you play. Mm. And yeah, anyway, let's, yeah. Le lest we get into too many conclusions because you guys can hear the audio and you can make up your own minds about some things. Yeah. Um, shall we, let's get a bit more grit going in the... In the amp, so okay, yes, okay. So what, we'll try and get some compression going in the amplifiers. Isn't yeah, it? natural compression going in the amplifiers. Because one, one amp we don't have here today is everyone will be, uh, you know, there'll be a fifty million comments that go, "Oh, Roland Jazz Chorus One Hundred and Twenty is the best clean amp ever." Yep, <laughs> it's certainly up there, and it is a sound. It's a sound, uh, and it and it. I I used one for two months. I was doing a gig on a cruise ship, right in Singapore, and. They said, oh, no, we've got all the amps here and stuff. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah, no problem. So I went on board, and what they had was a jazz chorus. And I had my rack and stuff, and, and normally play into marshals and things. Yeah. And for two months, I was playing through this jazz chorus, and it, the clean sound was fantastic. And it was an old jazz chorus, yeah. the original C1 yeah. stuff going on. The clean sound was awesome, but oh man, I worked so hard to try and get the overdrive thing to work. Yeah. And nothing I did made yeah. any. I had valve preamp going into it. Nothing I did made any difference. 
So um, they they are a classic. That's and there's loads of guys that have used them for, for that particular clean sound. And I think they are absolutely amazing. That story is a great example of why we haven't chosen one today. Because really, the questions that we get asked so much on the show are about using a transistor amp instead yeah, of a exactly. instead of a valve amp. Yeah. So you are looking at that low, um, you know, low level overdrive and mm. with the thing going into a bit of compression. Yeah. yeah. No, no arguments whatsoever about the JC120 yeah. and what a great clean sound it is. And we will have. JC120 or the JC4, the new yes. range. We'll get, we'll get them on the show definitely yeah. because they're they're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but for this exercise, right, you play then, ombre, and I will um, just dial a bit more. Uh... You know what, I'm going to switch over to the overdrive channel um, because that would seem to be the right thing to do and I'll do that on the other end. It's a bit hard with the Fender because the Fender doesn't have a master volume um, setup. Nor should it. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a bit hard to dial in more grit to the front end of the Fender. So as you heard through that, uh, we've made we've gone onto the overdrive channels of the other two amps, so they are compressing. Yeah, a bit edgy. Yeah. So um, maybe rather than laboriously go through all the pedals again. Okay. Why don't we just pick something that we think is going to work? Maybe a couple. All right, and uh, and and have a have a shifty through. Okay, I think the OCD yep. to the orange. Yep, 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 for me. So. <laughs> Let me try to turn the drive down a bit. <laughs> Okay, and finally the harlot. Finally the harlot, which will be... See, and I've talked about this before, <laughs> getting things into... Comp it's like, so as soon as the app is grinding like that, it's a very different experience it is. with how the pedals are going to work to the front end of it. Yeah. So you could hear instantly there, it's like the tube screamer cuts that bottom end off, so that works. Yeah. 
But the big muff was just this. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and the OCD for me didn't didn't do it either. The um, the harlot almost did it, but the only pedal that I think for me worked into the orange set up like that was the tube screamer, and I thought the tube screamer sounded ace. Okay, so let's whip over to the blues cube then. Okay, uh, what do we think? Well, start, let's start with the OCD again. I said we weren't going to go through all of the pedals, but that seems to be what we're doing, so... <laughs> all right, OCD. <laughs> Great. Okay, just th so let's have that into the fender. I know we're, we're jumping about all over the place here. All right, but... into the fender. <laughs> Come on. Really? Okay, you like that. Uh, let's try the Chief Screamer. breakfast this morning that's great it's killer <laughs> shreddies and speed <laughs> shreddies <laughs> right um uh, a tube screamer into the blues cube So it's doing that tube screamery thing. It is quite well. There, yeah, shelving off the bottom end. Yeah, uh, harlot. <laughs> See, that's really interesting for me. Struggling to get a lot of bottom end out of the yeah, orange today. Yeah, the, the blues cue is working really well, even in being compressed. 
Whereas as soon as the orange is compressed, it's sort of just flubbing out. Uh, I'm really impressed with the Blaze Cube. But I'm more impressed with the Fender. Shh, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. It is impossible doing this video because when you- It's so hard. When you come to it with what will be perceived to be such a massive bias towards valve amps. Yeah. Yes. Um, what other conclusion are we going to come to other than yeah, we're more familiar with how the uh, with how the valve amp sounds on the end of some reasonable pedals. Mm. But it's not it's not that because we've you know knowing how the pedals work and knowing how the uh, the fundamentals of compression works into amplifiers and, and matching the two up. Still, for me, I've connected with the Fender now. Uh, this is not an expensive amplifier. If you're going into a store looking for Something mid price, yes, it's more expensive than the transistor amplifiers. Might not be that much more. We'd have to check that, but yeah. anyway, yeah. But it does, so, okay, what the Fender doesn't have, it doesn't have reverb, no. it doesn't have effects loop, it doesn't You can't have... drive it unless it's really, really, really loud because yeah. there's no master volume on exactly. this particular model. So it's a real simple yeah. valve amplifier, whereas there are effects and different sort of between spring and hall reverbs and this, so you can. Yeah. You can sit around and get lots of different sounds. For me personally, it's not about lots of different sounds. It's about having a inspiring sound. Because you're a pedal board geezer. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, indeed. That's why we've kept the, the settings on the amps really, uh, really simple. So mm. in the in the Blues Cube, for example, you've got two channels. You've got boosts in both channels. You've got some knob called tone, which I think gives you a scoopier, mm. um, a scoopier thing. Mm. Okay, then. All right. Let's let's try that. Let's. Get yourself a nice overdrive sound into the Fender, which you really like. Okay. Using a pedal. Using a pedal. So I'm going to see if I can get anywhere near that with the blues cube without using any pedals. Okay. Okay. All right. Blues. So let's go from here. There we go.
So just to recap there, you were hearing the uh, Kingsley Harlot into the Fender Bass Breaker 1830 mm -hmm. and the, the Roland Blues Cube just on its own, no pedal. It was kind of impossible to dial out the mid-range yep. boxiness. Yep. Uh, and it was very hard to set the treble at the right level of um, glassiness and cut without being edgy. Yeah. Now, that's the thing that Fenders are really good at because you'll hear, you know, even with a lot of gain, there's a lot of sizzle on that top end. <laughs> But it's not harsh. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, uh, for me, it's been a common thing with a lot of transistor amplifiers. As soon as you get any amount of um, pedal gain going into the front of it, that sizzle becomes very harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so there we are. That's, that's round one. That's the beginning of our journey. Yeah. Into answering questions you might have about transistor amps. So if you've got any more questions and... and that this video has sparked thoughts you, and you're going hang on a minute you need to do that or whatever please post them below and we'll come in for round two at some point yes sounds good by the way guys just a quick note to say uh for everyone that's gone onto our uh, our website and bought a t-shirt thank you so much thank you um that kind of helps us keep up you know our thing going <laughs> doesn't kind of help us it absolutely <laughs> keeps us going <laughs> uh and we also have the patreon thing which you guys have signed up to which has been amazing so yeah, yeah. thank you very much to everyone that's gone and supported the the show we really appreciate it yeah absolutely and go and buy some more yeah there you go <laughs> all right so end of round one end of round one okay yeah um if there's anything that you specifically want to see on round two Insert in the comments. Which amp are you going home with today, Dan? Uh, it's... Yeah, yeah. Don't even have to ask. Okay. I do have... Uh, let's try the magic button. All three. Oh, nice. Come together. So this is all three. And all three with the... Let's say with the harlot. It had to be done. Had to be done. Be done. All, all three amps, all pedals. There we go. All right. right, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Bye.